Hey folks, how y'all doing today? Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video um, because I'm testing a couple things. I'm testing a new setup. Um, I'm using a headset to record the audio here um, because the roar of my forge makes it really hard to hear when I'm just talking into a mic, an open mic. So I got this Bluetooth headset set up uh, connected to my cell phone. And if, this, if the audio works well on this, I'm probably just going to continue to do it this way um, makes editing more difficult but I'd rather you be able to hear me and hear what I'm saying uh, than uh, have the prettiest video um, anyway what I'm going to be talking about today is kind of an introduction introduction video to sort of where I want my channel to kind of go and I am going to be putting this uh, on Instagram, so I'm going to try and keep this video somewhat short anyway, because Instagram doesn't seem to like long videos. And I figured I'd do this video to uh, to give you guys an idea of what's going to be going on, so that I don't have to explain everything every time I turn the camera on. Um, so this will be, I guess, the first installation in um, uh, Forge Magic series. And I did kind of promise I'd uh, do a video, a quick, at least a quick explanation video for um, a, uh, a witchcraft Facebook group that I'm a part of. So, um, well, I guess I'll get into it. Um, I'm going to be forging an axe, and this is kind of different steps. Actually, I'll be making several axes. These are the different steps and stages that, I'm, that you're going to be seeing me go through. I'm going to be starting with a piece of uh, mild steel, cut 5 inches long or 12.7 centimeters, uh, 1.5 inches or 3.81 centimeters wide, and uh, half an inch or uh, 1.27 centimeters thick. And the first thing I'll be doing is I'm going to be forging the bow tie. Which is the preform before you fold it over and before it really starts to look like an axe it actually looks a lot more like a bow tie it's a wrapped eye style of uh axe or hatchet and uh i'm doing this because i'm interested in getting into uh, axe throwing and i thought i'd make a couple of my own so i can go down to the range and test them and see if i have a have gotten it <clears throat> got that down um, this is the next stage after here. Um, when you force the bow tie, you fold it over. This is actually a bad example. I made several, uh, mistakes, which I had to re-weld. The, I got a horrible, uh, crack run right down there where you can see the weld seam. So this is obviously not a product that I can sell, but I can use it to, uh, teach myself and to improve and to at least get some forge welding practice in which I've kind of done here there's a little bit of forge welding there um, it didn't take as well as you can see I tried to uh, repair that with torch welding and that didn't take as well either so this is just going to be uh, repetition practice but it'll give you a chance to practice the eye on something that is that I don't really care about if it gets messed up so I'll have to drip that eye out. And uh, the advantage of a wrapped eye axe is you don't need to punch a hole through a solid piece of steel. Uh, instead, you can kind of just wrap the eye around. That's why it's called a wrapped eye axe. It's, uh, you know, you don't need to punch it. You do need to drift it and uh, shape it so it will fill in the, fill in the uh, hatchet handle better. But you don't need to actually punch through a solid piece of steel. Uh, if you don't have good punches or your punches are not made of uh, high quality material that will stand up to that, uh, wrapped eye axe is potentially a better way to go. Um, but uh, So what you're going to see me doing in uh, future videos to come is... Uh, kind of going through my little magical routine and how I get started and how I start and how I use Smithcraft to uh, to complement witchcraft and 
a little bit of uh, forge magic and occultist, occultist blacksmithing, though it could be argued that it's just witchcraft using uh, blacksmithing as a energy raising technique. Technique. Um, I guess it depends on your opinion there. Um, but I'll be starting off with the cleanse, which is just a basic smoke cleanse or saning, like you would any. If you know how to cleanse, then you know what I'll be doing. You'll understand. And I'll light my incense and uh, do a cleanse of the anvil and all the tools that I intend to use. And uh, the writing of my my intentions out on a piece of paper, placing that under the anvil, and that's going to it serves the same purpose as writing a petition and burning it in your cauldron, except I'm just placing it under the anvil. Uh, to kind of guide the magical intention, the energy that is being raised. Um, next, I'll be raising energy by means of forging, in this case, an axe. Uh, it could also be a knife or a candle holder or whatever you happen to be working on. The item itself is not the point. The point is raising energy by some means some people do uh some people use dance some people use music playing an instrument drumming uh chanting i i use forging um i don't see it as being all too terrible different um what does take a look what does a little bit different um excuse me Uh, at the end of the day, um, the end of the day when I or when I finish the project or when I'm ready to call it a day and uh, leave the project to be completed the next day, I'll turn the anvil so that the rounded horn, the point of the rounded horn, faces in the compass direction that best that best corresponds with the intention. Um, and there's some basic real it's real basic for me right now I'm still a beginner at this so but um, to give you an idea of how that kind of works um, you know the four basic directions earth the correspondences I have kind of coincide with uh, Rider Waite Smith tarot in that uh, earth uh, north corresponds with earth or the pentacles suit in the tarot. So if I was, which in this case, you know, doing a spell to try and get a job, well, that correspondence for North is going to be money spells, job spells, harvest, abundance. If the spell intention relates to anything that one would associate with the pentacles suit in tarot, then I would face the anvil North. Um, East, you know, that's air, athemes, or swords. Anything you would associate with that suit in the tarot would be a, that would be a good direction to face the anvil horn in if that's the intention for your spell. You know, south, fire, wands, or staves. You know, passion, creativity, inspiration, love, lust, etc. Anything you would use, anything that you would associate with the wands or staves suit in tarot kind of I mean you, you see where this is going right west water you know cups or chalices whichever deck you're using and uh, those those would be for healing spells emotion emotional matters and and actually I would face the amble west for uh, shadow work um, that's you know, that's the direction I point the amble if I'm working with the Morrigan, uh, specifically for shadow work. Um, or even Bridget. Uh, she, she doesn't, she's not shy about shadow work either. But, you know, other, you know, it's, it's not limited to that. Um, the other ways you can, other correspondences you could use for facing the amble would be astrology. Pointing the horn towards the uh, zodiac sign that best fits the, the intention. 
or uh, geography, if the spell is intended for a specific person, whether it's you know a healing spell, if you're not using the uh, compass directions, if it's a healing spell, or you know if you're doing something a little bit more more towards the left hand path, uh, if it's a hex playing the anvil horn in the other direction with their name written on a piece of paper placed under the anvil. That's, you know, a very basic uh, description of how one might use the anvil to do that. Uh, moonology. Pointing the anvil towards the same zodiac sign that the moon is currently in to tap into the, the, the uh, lunar energy. Or... Pointing the anvil towards a sign that the moon will be in the next time it's full or a dark moon or whatever phase of the moon you're trying to utilize as a sort of a timer. And you can do that with actually probably any, any astrological body that you wanted to do that with. Um, You, you could use pretty much anything with Smithcraft as you can in, in basic witchcraft. It's just a matter of getting creative. And there's more advanced ways of doing it. Um, working with it. It's not, for me, it's not, I'm not imbuing the item that I'm forging with anything. Um, I'm using the energy raised during the forging process. Well, I'm using the forging process to raise energy to power, to, you know, go off and power the spell in a specific way. Um, and the reason I do that, Smithcraft and spell work, it gives me an, a physical analog to gauge the effectiveness of my spells and my rituals. Um, and I've actually recently have an example here of a spell that did not work and I knew it would not work before the results were uh, apparent because this is actually terrible I'm not happy with the way this came out and I wasn't happy when I saw it and I knew that the spell that I was doing while forging this probably wasn't going to work and uh, it didn't uh, I did not get the job that I had intended to get. I was hoping, I was hoping that I would be uh, given the opportunity to interview for a job um, teaching Smithcraft and uh, you know forge magic on an online school that teaches you know witchcraft and how to use magic and all that and uh, to online students. I did not get that job, and I knew I wouldn't, and I actually agree with the reasons. So this is not actually a bad thing. Um, it just means I'm not qualified. And if you're going to try and get a job at a magical school, why not use magic to try and do it? I would hope that everybody that applied would have done the same thing. You're applying to a witchcraft school. Use witchcraft. That's uh, And if they did, well, then they're obviously more qualified than me. And that's okay. I'm actually perfectly fine and happy with those results. Uh, because it actually uh, gave me the opportunity to pursue a different path. And that's not a bad thing. Anyway, I hope that gives you a good idea of what I'll be doing in future videos. Or at least a brief overview that you thought might that you might think uh, interesting. Uh, if you don't follow me on YouTube. And it's okay if you don't. But um, I'm going to wrap the video up because we're getting about on 15 minutes. And Instagram doesn't like him when they're longer than that. So I will see y'all later in future videos. Bye-bye.